In this video, we'll learn how to calculate probabilities of an exact number of successes. We're going to start with knowledge that we have from previous sections, and then we're going to learn an easier way of doing it with a formula. So first, we're going to figure out how many ways x successes could occur. You can either list them out or use the combinations formula. Then we'll calculate the probability of one of those ways using the multiplication rule. And we're only going to calculate the probability of one of those ways because it turns out that every single one of those ways will have the same likelihood. Then we'll apply the addition rule. Since we know any one of those NCR com combinations, the number of combinations of ways that we could get a certain number of successes, all of those ways will be the same probability as I mentioned. So if we just add them together, we can get the total probability of getting x successes. And since they're all the same, it's repeated addition, and we can get that done much faster by using multiplication. So calculate the probability when we roll a fair six-sided die five times and record the number of times it lands with three dots on top. So we're going to use what we've learned so far to calculate the probability of rolling exactly two times, rolling a three exactly two times. So a success would be rolling a three. A failure would be not rolling a three. And we can notate the probabilities of each. Lowercase p represents the probability of success in a single trial in one single row, which equals one side that has a three on it out of six sides. The probability of not rolling a three is the probability of failure, and we denote that with Q, and that would be five ways to not roll a three out of the total six. Notice that P and Q add up to one. They must add up to one since they are complementary. So the probability of exactly two successes we could start by realizing that there are many ways to get exactly two successes when rolling a die five times. And I've listed all of those ways out. You can see I could have two successes and then three failures, or success, fail, success, fail, fail, and so on. And I figured out that I had 10 different ways of getting that. Now I could have figured out that I had 10 different ways by using the combinations formula and doing five choose two. But note that each of these has the same probability. Why do they have the same probability? Because if I'm using the multiplication rule to do success and then success and then fail and then fail and then fail, I'm going to be multiplying the one over six to the power of two because I'll be doing 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 for those two successes. And then for the failures, I'm going to do 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 5 over 6, which is 5 over 6 to the power of 3. And since multiplication is commutative, what that means is it, you can move the factors around and it still gives you the same product. For instance, we know that 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. So just rearranging the order of the successes and failures is not going to change the probability of each possible outcome. So we can just add it up 10 times. So first, the probability of a single success, success, fail, fail, fail. This is one outcome that has two successes and three failures. As I mentioned, one out of six squared, and five out of six to the power of three or cubed. That gives us this probability. Now, times 10 different ways, we end up with 0 0.1608. So that may seem like a long road to go through to get to the answer. That's because it is. And we've come up with a much faster and more efficient way. And that's the binomial probability distribution function, or formula, as you want to look at it. And it looks kind of complicated, but it's very simple when you understand 
that we're just doing the multiplication rule, the probability of success, to the power of the number of successes, the probability of failure, to the power of the number of failures, and since the number of failures will always be what's left when you've already had a certain number of successes, we call that n minus x failures. And then this whole part might look familiar. This is the combinations formula. So a simplified version of the formula can be written as c n x. This is just another way to write n c r, the combinations formula. So instead of n c r, we have c n x, where x takes the place of r, and x is recording the number of successes times p to the power of x, so how many successes you have, times uh, its probability, that power, failures to the power of what's left. So let's try it out. Roll a fair six-sided die five times and record the number of times it lands with three dots on top. Calculate the probability of rolling a three exactly two times. So this is the exact thing, same thing the exact same problem we just had, but now we're doing it with the formula. So, n is the number of rolls, 5, x is the number of successes, 2, p is the probability of success, 1 out of 6, and q is always equal to 1 minus p, 5 out of 6. So, we calculate the probability of exactly two successes by finding the number of combinations when having five items and choosing two. And order doesn't matter, meaning we count um, any order as favorable times one over six to the power of two, the probability of failure to the power of three, right? So if we have five trials and two successes, then what's left? We'll have three other trials that we know are going to be failures. So notice that two and three add up to the total number of trials, five. And also that the probability of success and the probability of failure have to add up to one. So when we do the combinations formula with five choose two, we get 10. When we do one over six squared times 5 over 6 cubed times 10, we'll get this. Here's another example. Flip a fair coin four times and count how many times it lands on heads. Calculate the probability of getting exactly three heads. So using the formula, this time n is 4 because we're going to flip the coin four times. The number of successes is we want exactly three heads. The probability of a heads is 0.5. And Q, the probability of not getting a head or getting a tails, is 1 minus P or 0.5. They're equally likely outcomes in this case. So we calculate the probability of exactly four successes by finding the number of combinations when you have four items and you choose three times 0 0.5 to the power of 3, that's the number of successes, raising the probability of success to the power of 3, times 0 0.5, the probability of failure, to the power of 1. So that simplifies down to this, and we end up with 0.25. In the next video, we're going to construct the probability distribution for a binomial random variable.